Welcome to episode two of Ode to a Mockingbird. In this episode, we'll be reading some poems from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. A couple years back, a good friend of mine named Chris, who's a singer, songwriter, and poet, said that if he were born 150 years earlier, he'd have asked her out on a date. And I told Chris, if I was born 150 years earlier, I'd have challenged you to a duel. So sit back and relax, and let's dive right in. How Do I Love Thee? Sonnet 43 How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose... I shall but love thee better after death. Bird Spirit I am the nearest nightingale that singeth in Eden after you. And I am singing loud and true and sweet. I do not fail. I sit upon a cypress bough close to the gate and I fling my song over the gate and through the mail of the warden angels marshaled strong over the gate and after you. And the warden angels let it pass because the poor brown bird, alas, sings in the garden, sweet and true. And I build my song of high, pure notes, note over note, height over height, Till I strike the arch of the infinite and I bridge abysmal agonies with strong, clear calms of harmonies. And something abides and something floats in the song which I sing after you. Fare ye well, farewell. The creature sounds, no longer audible, expire at Eden's door. Each footstep of your reading treads out some cadence which ye heard before. Farewell. The birds of Eden ye shall hear nevermore. The Sleep Of all the thoughts of God that are born inward into souls afar, Along the psalmist music deep, now tell me if that any is for gift or grace surpassing this, he giveth his beloved sleep. What would we give to our beloved? The hero's heart to be unmoved, the poet's star-tuned harp to sweep, the patriot's voice to teach and rouse, the monarch's crown to light the brows. He giveth his beloved sleep. What do we give to our beloved? A little faith all undisproved, a little dust to oversweep, and bitter memories to make the whole earth blasted for our sake. He giveth his beloved sleep. Sleep soft, beloved, we sometimes say, 
who have no tune to charm away sad dreams that through the eyelids creep, but never a doleful dream again shall break the happy slumber when he giveth his beloved sleep. O earth, so full of dreary noises, O men with wailing in your voices, O delved gold, the wailers heap, O strife, O curse that o'er it fall, God strikes a silence through you all and giveth his beloved sleep. His dews drop mutely on the hill, His cloud above it saileth still, Though on its slope men sow and reap. More softly than the dew is shed Or cloud is floated overhead, he giveth his beloved sleep. Ay, men may wonder while they scan A living, thinking, feeling man Confirmed in such a rest to keep. But angels say, and through the word I think their happy smile is heard, He giveth his beloved sleep. For me, my heart that erst did go Most like a tired child at a show, that sees through tears the mummer's leap, Would now its wearied vision close, Would childlike on his love repose, Who giveth his beloved sleep. And friends, dear friends, When it shall be that this low breath is gone from me, And round my bier you come to weep, Let one most loving of you all say, not a tear must o'er her fall. He giveth his beloved sleep. Consolation All are not taken. There are left behind living beloveds, Tender looks to bring and make the daylight still a happy thing, And tender voices to make soft the wind. But if it were not so, if I could find no love in all this world for comforting, nor any path but hollowly did ring where dust to dust the love from life disjoined, and if before those sepulchres unmoving I stood alone, as some forsaken lamb goes bleeding up the moors in weary dearth, crying, Where are ye, O my loved and loving? I know a voice would sound. Daughter, I am. Can I suffice for heaven and not for earth? The Autumn Go sit upon the lofty hill And turn your eyes around Where waving woods and waters wild Do hymn an autumn sound. The summer sun is faint on them, The summer flowers depart, Sit still as all transformed to stone, Except your musing heart. How there you sat in summertime May yet be in your mind, And how you heard the green wood Sing beneath the freshening wind. Though the same wind now blows around, Ye would its blast recall, For every breath that stirs the trees Doth cause a leaf to fall. Oh, like that wind is all the mirth That flesh and dust impart, We cannot bear its visitings When change is on the heart. Gay words and jests may make us smile When sorrow is asleep, But other things must make us smile When sorrow bids us weep. The dearest hands that clasp our hands, Their presence may be o'er. The dearest voice that meets our ear, That tone may come no more. Youth fades, and then the joys of youth, Which once refreshed our mind, shall come, As on those sighing woods, The chilling autumn wind. Hear not the wind, view not the woods, Look out o'er vale and hill and spring, The sky encircled them, 
the sky is round them still. Come autumn's scathe, come winter's cold, come change and human fate. Whatever prospect heaven doth bound can ne'er be desolate. The House of Clouds I would build a cloudy house for my thoughts to live in, when for earth too fancy loose and too low for heaven. Hush, I talk my dream aloud. I build it bright to see. I build it on the moonlit cloud to which I looked with thee. Cloud walls of the morning's gray faced with amber column crowned with crimson cupola from the sunset solemn. May mists for the casements fetch pale and glimmering with a sunbeam hid in each and a smell of spring. Build the entrance high and proud, darkening and then brightening, if a river thundercloud veined by the lightning, use one with an iris stain for the door within, turn into a sound like rain as I enter in. Build a spacious hall thereby, boldly, never fearing, Use the blue place of the sky which the wind is clearing. Use the blue place of the sky which the wind is clearing, branched with corridors sublime, flecked with winding stairs such as children wish to climb following their own prayers. In the mutest of the house I will have my chamber. Silence at the door shall use evening's light of amber. Solemnizing every mood, softening in degree, turning sadness into good as I turn the key. Be my chamber tapestried with the showers of summer, close but soundless, glorified when the sunbeams come here. Wandering harpers harping on waters stringed for such. Draw in color for a tune with a vibrant touch. Bring a shadow green and still from the chestnut forest. Bring a purple from the hill when the heat is sourced. Spread them out from wall to wall. Carpet wove around whereupon the foot shall fall in light instead of sound. Bring fantasque cloudlets home from the noontide zenith. Ranged for sculptures round the room, named as Fancy Weenoth. Some be Junos without eyes, Naiads without sources. Some be birds of paradise, some Olympian horses. Bring the dews the birds shake off, waken in the hedges. Those two perfumed for a proof from the lily's edges. From our England's field and more, bring them calm and white in, whence to form a mirror pure for love's self-delighting. Bring a gray cloud from the east where the lark is singing, something of the song at least unlost in the bringing, that shall be a morning chair, poet dream may sit in when it leans out on the air, unrhymed and unwritten. Bring the red cloud from the sun, while he sinketh catch it. This shall be a couch with one sidelong star to watch it, fit for the poet's finest thought at the curfew sounding. Things unseen being nearer brought than the seen around him. Poet's thought, not a poet's sigh, lest they come together. Cloudy walls divide and fly as in April weather. Cupola and column proud structure bright to see, gone, except that moonlit cloud to which I looked with thee. Let them. Wipe such visionings from the fancy's cartel. Love secures some fairer things, 
dowered with his immortal. The sun may darken, heaven be bowed, but still unchanged shall be. Here in my soul, that moonlit cloud to which I looked with thee. My heart and I. Enough. We're tired, my heart and I. We sit beside the headstone thus and wish that name were carved for us. The moss reprints more tenderly the hard types of the mason's knife as heaven's sweet life renews earth's life with which we're tired, my heart and I. You see, we're tired, my heart and I. We dealt with books, we trusted men, and in our own blood drenched the pen as if such colors could not fly. We walked too straight for fortune's end. We loved too true to keep a friend. At last, we're tired, my heart and I. How tired we feel, my heart and I. We seem of no use in the world. Our fancies hang gray and uncurled about men's eyes indifferently. Our voice, which thrilled you so, will let you sleep. Our tears are only wet. What do we hear, my heart and I? So tired. So tired, my heart and I. It was not thus in that old time when Ralph sat with me neath the lime to watch the sunset from the sky. Dear love, you're looking tired, he said. I, smiling at him, shook my head. Tis now we're tired, my heart and I. So tired. So tired, my heart and I. Though now none takes me on his arm to fold me close and kiss me warm till each quick breath end in a sigh of happy languor. Now, alone, we lean upon this graveyard stone uncheered, unkissed, my heart and I. Tired out we are, my heart and I. Suppose the world brought diadems to tempt us crusted with loose gems of powers and pleasures. Let it try. We scarcely care to look at even a pretty child or God's blue heaven. We feel so tired, my heart and I. Yet who complains, my heart and I? In this abundant earth, no doubt, is little room for things worn out. Disdain them, break them, throw them by. And if before the days grew rough, we once were loved us well enough. I think we've farred, my heart and I. Sonnet 14 If thou must love me, let it be for naught except for love's sake only. Do not say, I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine and certes brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed or change for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Neither love me for thine own dear pity's wiping my cheeks dry. A creature might forget to weep who bore thy comfort long and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake that evermore thou mayest love on through love's eternity.